All right, let's talk about ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular, ventricular tachycardia, also known as VTAC, is when you're having tachycardia, which is tachy being an increased rate of the heart, so increased pulse rate, but it's the ventricles. So if you recall, the, the heart is broken into four chambers. At the top are the atrium and the bottom are the ventricles. And the ventricle's job is to push blood out of the heart. So the right ventricle pushes it off to the lungs and the uh, left ventricle pushes the blood to the rest of the body. Now, what happens is a typical uh, EKG, you'll have a P wave, which is the atrial uh, contraction, a QRS complex, which is the ventricular contraction, and then you'll have a nice T wave, and that is the ventricles relaxing. What happens is the, the ventricles are, are firing one after another. And so what you end up getting is a QRS complex, QRS complex, QRS complex, QRS complex, and what that is is the ventricle are just going haywire. And so what you'll see is something like this, big, bold, uh, up and down sawtooths. Okay, the way you can tell the difference between this and V-fib, V-fib would be something, I mean, it's just kind of scattered all over the place and usually it's pretty narrow. This is big old sawtooth, V-tac, okay? See the big old V's in there? All right, now this can be proximal, which is where you'll have, a patient will have a normal heart, uh, EKG and then they'll get maybe three and then it will go back to normal, okay? Or they're sustained, which is this, where it is one after another, after another, after another. And when it comes to this, it puts the patient at risk for developing either V-fib, which is even worse, or cardiac arrest. Now the difference between ventricular tachycardia and V-fib, besides the EKG, is in VTAC, the, it, it is uh, squeezing with each uh, contraction. It's probably not, it's not uh, a, an effective squeeze, but it's at least squeezing with V. Fib, they're fibrillating, so the ventricles are no longer really contracting, they're just uh, quivering, okay? So, treatment for VTAC. If the patient is stable, what this is, they're in VTAC, however, they still have a pulse, and they're not showing any signs and symptoms yet of decreased cardiac output, okay? And remember, the decreased cardiac output is because this isn't able to push the blood to the body like it's supposed to. If they're stable, you just give them some oxygen to help the heart uh, to push as much oxygen as possible, and you'll give them some antidysrhythmic medications. Now, if they're unstable, which is they still got a pulse, um, they're still they they're, they're probably still conscious, uh, but they're showing signs and symptoms of decreased cardiac output, maybe change in level of consciousness, uh, poor pulses, uh, decreased um, blood return, and so you're starting to see that the oxygen other. Uh, uh, cardiac output is decreasing. You're still giving O2 and antidysrhythmics. Uh, at this point, you can uh, probably get them to do the cough method. And what this is is they found that these patients that they cough really hard every one to three seconds. Sometimes that pressure may hit the heart at the same time as one of these beats, and it may actually put the heart into a regular beat. However, if that doesn't work, they may need cardioversion. Now, this is different from a defibrillator in that it is a timed precision shock. Uh, to tell the heart, hey, this is when we need to beat, okay? Not like a pacemaker, but it's a one-time shock. If the patient uh, develops pulselessness and then they're unconscious at this point, there's no blood going anywhere, uh, you want to get the defibrillator and it's just going uh, to shock them out of the rhythm um, and you're going to be needing to do CPR. Uh, you're going to be doing chest compressions so that you can get the blood flown through the body so they don't have an anoxic brain injury so you can supply those organs and at this point you're just going to treat it like a typical code blue status. So this is ventricular tachycardia.